I would like to thank one of my subscribers, Daniel Meyer, for this story. And this story is just more proof of who gets neglected in this country. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of cities that look this way in America. America, which is supposed to be one of the richest nations in the world. Well, it's got many locations that look just like this. Even the city I come out of, Philadelphia, there are boarded up homes all over the place. So black homeowners pushed out of one Baltimore block shows how Wall Street banks failed to lend money they had promised. So, you know, they promised to bring these communities back to life and do absolutely nothing. Here in my state, when the casinos were built in Atlantic City, there were a lot of areas that look similar and they promise they were going to pour money into the community and they never did they never did it they made the promise but the city did not improve so banks promised to invest in black communities after they were hit by the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Bloomberg found those promises go unmet as large lenders stop serving mostly black neighborhoods. The lenders retreat is just one reason the massive racial wealth gap in America isn't improving. Just 14 minutes from the bustling streets of downtown Baltimore lies the 2900 block of Walbrook Avenue. The block stands as a glaring reminder of the broken promises made by some of Wall Street's biggest banks to support America's black um, homeowners. A recent Bloomberg investigation shows several major lenders stop offering mortgages to residents in areas, uh, community mostly working class black families in years following the 2008-2009 financial crisis. So before large institutions, including Bank of America, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo held mortgages on 12 of the 38 lots on the block today only two belong to wells fargo and jp morgan mm -mm -mm. and they're both held by landlords not homeowners who use the property as their primary residences Bloomberg's reporting on Walbrook Avenue reinforces how the economic disaster brought on by subprime mortgages crash the stretch from 2007 to 2010, disproportionately hurting minority households and how the effects are being felt to this day. Black Americans have historically owned their own homes at much lower rates than white American. That's because you have sabotaged it to be that way. And the disappearance of these large lenders from Walbrook Avenue and elsewhere have contributed to uh, what is known as home ownership gap. As of October, 2021, according to the US Census Bureau, 45% of black American owned homes which is nearly 30 points below the rate of white Americans, 74.6%. On Walbrook Avenue, the absence of large lenders have left many locals without a lifeline. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've seen this growing up and also well into my adulthood. At one point in time, I worked in Camden, New Jersey, 
And sometimes it would be whole blocks boarded up on both sides, you know? And then one day I was driving to work. I had to take a detour because, you know, road construction. And every house was boarded on the street except for one house. One house. And I'm like, wow. You know, I remember back in the day where the neighborhood had a lot of life and a lot of people lived in these homes. And it's like a skeleton of itself in certain parts of the city, you know, and it's been like that for quite some time. I mean, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. All right. So according to Bloomberg's investigation, Wells Fargo, which purchased a mortgage on the Joneses family home, from an undisclosed lender in 2012, has sold at least 3,000 of its Baltimore properties to real estate attorneys between the year and 2021. Mm -mm -mm. So while it's unclear how many homeowners have lost their properties as a result, Bloomberg suggests that the bank's actions have contributed to lower rates of black home ownership in the area. Well, yeah, and we also know a huge contributing act, you know, act that the banks did was redlining. And they secretly still redline to this very day. They've never stopped. That's one thing about these folks. They never stop doing anything. They will repackage it, give it a whole different name, but continue to practice the same thing over and over. You got to understand the legal system, banking, real estate, even many of these government agencies, they still run on Jim Crow. If you look at court cases from 90 years ago and look at court cases today, they mirror each other. Remember, they we're still putting civil war judges in place to make sure that people in our community could never prevail in criminal court. And what do they do now? They still do everything to deny justice. Now, they'll give justice, but they'll fall short on the sentences. Or they just let the person skip on out and they know they committed a heinous crime. But as long as it's against us, it's all good. But they never stop practicing Jim Crow in this country. What they do is use smoking mirrors. They integrated everything out in public. Well, you can go in public places. You can go in the same restaurant, same movie theater. But when it comes down to the business side and the government side, it's still very Jim Crow up in here. And, and this is just more proof of it right here. They do a lot of manipulation just so they don't have to do anything for the black community that they do for other communities. So Wells Fargo made uh, the largest vow in 2017, a pledge to lend $60 billion for the creation of 250,000 black homeowners within a decade. But according to Bloomberg, it underwrote 40% fewer mortgages to black buyers in 2021 than the year it announced its goal. It's clearly going in the wrong direction, Brad Blackwell, a retired senior executive behind Wells Fargo 2017 goal told Bloomberg. In 2021, studies with Brookings Institute, a nonprofit public policy organization, shows that since 2010, the number of banks in majority Black neighborhoods has decreased by 14.6%. Their withdrawal 
has helped widen the nation's racial wealth gap, which I'm not surprised, y'all. I'm not surprised. You know, they're going to always make home ownership difficult for us. They always have. They always will. So indeed, the data of an October study from the Federal Reserve Bank shows that white Americans currently hold 84% of total U.S. wealth, but make up only 60% of the population. Whereas Black Americans, here here we go, y'all, 13% of the population. I just want y'all to know, we know you're lying. We we know you're lying about that 13%, but you, you can keep going on that path, but just know that when you keep saying that, we don't believe you. And you coming over trying to reinforce it to us, that's not helping you at all. We still don't believe you. So anyway... Um, hold 45% of the wealth. Simply put, the wealth of the richest 400 Americans is equivalent to that of 43 million Black Americans. Exactly. Again, all by sabotage. All by sabotage. So, y'all, nobody should be surprised by this. You know, look, I did a story on how uh, 70% or more of the mortgages have deeds that have writing on it saying that this house can never be sold to Black Americans. That That's written in deeds all across this country. Okay? And it's so many it's impossible for them to get that off of all the deeds, but that is written on deeds. And I did a story on that too. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment. <laughs> this is unbelievable. And subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family. Yeah, it's messed up with Loretta. It's messed up, girl. Peace, family.